Traditionally, a classical liberal education consisted of the trivium and the quadrivium. Here I have two books, one on the trivium, a very, very old book, which we'll cover in a minute, and a book on the quadrivium, a very, very new book, which we'll also cover in about a minute or two. Now, the trivium consists of logic, grammar, and rhetoric. The quadrivium consists of arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. So here we have the book on the trivium, titled The Trivium, The Liberal Arts of Logic, Grammar, and Rhetoric, Understanding the Nature and Function of Language by the brilliant sister Miriam Joseph. Now, by chance, I first discovered this book at a Barnes & Noble and almost instantly fell in love with this book, so I entirely agree with this endorsement. Whoever owns this book owns a treasure. Now, we can see a picture of Sister Miriam Joseph in the back of the book. So here is the brilliant Sister Miriam Joseph. It is an old book. It was originally published in 1937. So the prose of the book, the style that the book is written in, is somewhat difficult, but it's not too bad. Let's look at the back and then the table of contents. So here it says... The Trivium guides the reader through a clarifying and rigorous account of logic, grammar, and rhetoric. A thorough presentation of general grammar, propositions, syllogisms, enthymemes, fallacies, poetics, figurative language, and metrical discourse, accompanied by lucid graphics and enlivened by examples from Shakespeare, Milton, Plato, and others, makes the Trivium a perfect book for teachers, students, writers, lawyers, and all serious users of language. And that's certainly the case. If you go through this book, do the exercises, study from this book, your verbal reasoning skills will go through the roof without question. They will improve. There's no question about it. And it's quite good. Now, most of the book is on logic, but it does begin with some grammar. So first, we have an introduction to the liberal arts. Then we get into grammar. Don't just think it's about nouns and pronouns and adjectives and verbs and so forth. It takes a more philosophical approach to grammar. Then we get into logic, which is the bulk of the book. Syllogisms hypothetical and disjunctive propositions, fallacies. There's some induction, not much, but some. But also composition and reading. So we can think about rhetoric. We can think about the philosophy of narratives. We can think about narrative styles. We can think about some poetry. Even, to some extent, believe it or not, the mathematics of poetry. Because poetry, at least traditional poetry, can be mathematical in terms of the patterns it uses. So it's quite good. There's a lot of charts. Um, to illustrate things, there are lots of examples, lots of summary charts. So here we have something on the poetic use of language. Excuse me, we have, for example, the philosophical dimension of language. We have a section on the logical dimension of language. We get into propositions. We look at classical literature as a guide to analyze. We have things on syllogisms and much, much more. We have stuff on induction. We have thinking about the analysis of action in the novel, in a play. We can think of narrative structure. We think about point of view, focus, frame, degree of dramaticalization, and much more. You can think about, let's see, forecast, suspense, transition, technique of presentation. So we can analyze literature in a very rigorous, systematic manner. Quite a good book, The Trivium. The next one, and unfortunately, if you buy a new copy of this, it can be somewhat expensive. I got lucky with this book, but it is expensive, unfortunately. But this is A Brief Quadrivium by Peter Ulrichson. But it is quite good, and I like it a lot. And there's a lot of stuff in here for me to learn that I don't know much about. So you'll see this book is very, very new. Copyright 2023 by the Catholic Education Press. Let's first look at at least part of the back in the table of contents. So here it says, mathematical, pardon me, mathematics occupies a central place in the traditional liberal arts. The four mathematical disciplines of the quadrivium, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy, reveal their enduring significance in this work, which offers the first unified textbook treatment of these four subjects. It continues, this book makes the quadrivium newly accessible in a number of ways. First, the careful choice of material from ancient sources means that students receive a faithful, integral impression of the classical quadrivium without being burdened or confused by unwieldy mass of scattered results. Second, the terminology and symbols that are used convey the real insights of older mathematical approaches without introducing needless archism. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the book is filled with hundreds of exercises. 
It tells us many readers can profit from this introduction to the quadrivium. Students in high school will acquire a sense of the nature of mathematical proof and become confident in using mathematical language. College students can discover that mathematics is more than procedure, while also gaining insight into an intellectual current that influenced authors they are already reading, such as Plato, Augustine, Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas, and Dante. All will find a practical way to grasp a body of knowledge that, if long neglected, is never out of date. So you'll see that Part one, it's on geometry. There's lots of proofs in here. It doesn't treat mathematics as just a game of playing around with symbols or just following steps blindly. It's not about solving textbook problems in an algorithmic manner. It's about proof making. It's about understanding. It's about concepts. So it's a quite good book. It's not aimed at a mathematician, just aimed at an educated reader, someone who wants to become a more educated human being. So we start with geometry. We get into things like the foundation of a science, we think about terms, postulates, and proofs, or many, many exercises. We think about proofs with triangles, properties of parallels. We think about quadrilaterals. There's even spherical, not spherical, excuse me, yeah, spherical trigonometry in this book. So it's quite interesting. And many, many people do not learn any spherical trigonometry. So just learning a little bit of it is pretty cool. Part two gets into arithmetic. So we're really getting to number theory, right? So we can think about, for example, even and odd numbers. We can prove things about them. We're doing simple proofs. We can think about prime numbers and so forth. Part three is on music, music theory, which is something I need to learn much, much more about. I know very little on that subject. So here I have this book, so hopefully I'll learn something. I haven't extensively read this yet, but I would like to learn the basics. Part four is on astronomy. And here we have our spherical trigonometry. So that's pretty cool. It's very unusual to learn that subject. So just to learn some of the basics, I think is pretty neat. Um, we have things about um, elements of lunar astronomy. We can think about um, ellipses. We can think about the planets. Part five is beyond the quadrivium. We get into some physics, a little bit more mathematics. Think of the real numbers or functions or non-Euclidean geometry. And then a little bit on philosophy, foundations of mathematics, logic of mathematics, and so forth. So it's quite good. You'll see there's a lot of diagrams in this book, many exercises. The author takes you through things step by step. It's not aimed at a math major. It's aimed at the average person. Here we have the foundation of science. Here we have some undefined terms like point, segment, line, ray, angle, curve. We start with some simple proof making with Euclidean geometry. There are many exercises, like I said. Here's something on the Pythagorean theorem. So we can prove the Pythagorean theorem. We can get into, let's see. So this gets into some basic number theory. It's quite a good book and it's well written, quite interesting. Here's something on music theory. Here we get into plain spherical trigonometry, which is really, really cool. And it's a very unusual topic to study. So this is the quadrivium, a brief on the quadrivium. And here's the book, The Trivium. If you're interested in these books, you can look at the links below. I have some Amazon links. If you buy from Amazon, I will get a small commission, no charge to you, no extra charge to you. If you enjoy this type of material, consider visiting my website, amateurlogician.com. I have a newsletter there. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to it, if you're interested in logic and a classical liberal education. In any case, I'm the Amateur Logician, and be well.